an electric cooker has an oven rated 3000 watts, a grill rated 2000 watts, and two heater plates, each rated 900 watts. The cooker play, oh, sorry, the cooker operates from a 240 volts main supply. If the cost of electricity is 55 in way, the unit of electricity, what would be the cost of running the oven, the grill, and the two heater plates for five hours? So, energy, energy, electric energy is equal to power times time. And then the power should be in kilowatts and the time in hours because the unit is kilowatt hour. That's the unit of energy, electric energy. So the power should be in kilowatts and then the time in hours. So we've been given something like 3,000 watts, then plus 2,000 watts, then plus two heater plates, each rated 900 watts. So this will be 1,800 watts. And then this, it's a zero, zero, 008, this will be 6,800 watts. And in kilowatts, it's, it will be, it's just the same as 6.8, if we divide by 1,000, of course, kilowatts. And then we've got five hours. So this is the power. And then we've got time, five hours. So, for us to find the energy, E is equal to power times time, which will be equal to 6.8 kilowatt, kilowatts times 5 hours. This will be equal to 6.8 times 5. That's 34 kilowatt hour. But one unit, uh, pay this one unit of electricity is equal to 1 kilowatt hour. So, one unit, one unit costs 0 0.55 in way. So, this will be multiplied by 0 0.55 in way in order to vo sorry, 0 0.55 kwacha, which is 55 in way, in order to calculate the cost of the electricity in five hours. So cost is equal to 34 kilowatt hour times the money, which is 0 0.55 kwacha. Because 55 in way is just the same as 0 0.55 kwacha. We've got 100 in way is equal to one quarter. So the cost will be equal to 34 times 0 0.55. That's 18 quarter 17 way. 18.7. Yeah, you can even inc include the zero like them. So the answer is A. 18 quarter 17 way. Which of the following will cost most if operated from the main supply? So here we are just going to calculate the energy because cost is dependent on the energy the amount of energy just like we are from solving so we're just going to calculate the energy we've been given the power and we've been given the 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 time so we're just going to calculate the, the energy for example a is giving us 5000 watts which is equal to 5 kilowatts and then time is one minute which is equal to so one minute is equal to 1 over 60 over an hour. You see? And then the, the energy will be equal to this 5 kilowatts times this time, which is 5 times 1 over 60. That will be 0 0.1. And then we, we, we find the energy for B. B, we've been given 1,000 watts, which is equal to 1 kilowatt, and then the time we've been given 10 minutes, which is equal to 10 over 10 of 60, 60 minutes over an hour, 10 over 60 over an hour, which is just one over six over an hour. And then, so energy will be equal to this one kilowatt times one over six hours. And this will be, what is one over six? That's 0 0.2. 0 0.2 kilowatt hour. So this is the energy. And then we go to the answer at C. 500 watts electric ion for one hour. So 500 watts will be equal to, it's just the same as 0 0.5 kilowatt. So times one hour, the energy will be equal to 0 0.5 kilowatt hour. And then for D, it's 100 watts 
for used for one day which is 24 hours so 0 0.1 is the same 0 0.1 kilowatt is the same as this 100 watts times 24 hours it's going to give us 2.4 2.4 kilowatt hour so in this case the question was which of the following will cost the most if operated from the main supply so this lamp will cost the most because it has got the greater energy so the answer the answer is d in this case uh, a simple model of a dc motor is made up is made but the split rings are left out the coil is however still connected to the battery sorry still connected to the battery as shown in the diagram below if the coil is able to turn, describe the movement of the coil once the switch S is closed. So, in this case, we are talking about something. Uh, so, uh, because the split ring is not present and the function of the split ring is to rectify the voltage or to ensure that current produced is in the form of DC, yeah. So uh, it ensures that the direction of current is not changing periodically. Because of the function of this same split ring, uh, the DC generator has a positive and negative terminal or DC motor, as per se. So in this case, if the split rings are omitted or are left out, then the, the, the motor won't have a negative or positive terminal. In the end, it does not move at all. So the answer is A. That's the correct answer, A. The diagram below shows a current carrying wire in a horizontal magnetic field, which arrow shows the direction of the force experienced by the wire. Uh, in this case, there's, well, I just can't remember that rule. I've got forgotten the name, sorry, but I'll just show you. If the direction of the current is going like this, in this direction, and then for you to determine the direction of the force we use this something like this okay. so this thumb of this finger shows the direction of current and then this finger the thumb it shows the direction of the force so the the, the force is perpendicular the force is perpendicular to the to the direction of current so in this case when you look at the diagram if we use the th this same same whatever the same rule, we are going to do something like this. So the thumb will still be the direction of the current. So the current is going this way, and then the thumb will, will go this way. So the answer is C. In this case, the diagram below shows the sine wave for an AC input on the screen of the cathode ray oscilloscope. The gain control is set at 0.5 meters or 0.5 volts per centimeter, and the time base at 10 milliseconds per centimeter. What is the peak voltage? The peak voltage, uh, this is, these are the lines here. So the, it's 0 0.50 volts per centimeter. This is one centimeter over here. This is one centimeter. This is one centimeter. So if this is 0 0.5 per centimeter, so what will be the peak voltage? The peak voltage is from here up to here. So what is this? This is 0 0.5, 0 0.5 plus 0 0.5, that's one. And then 0 0.5 plus 0 1.5, 1 plus 0 0.5, it will be 1.5. And then 1.5 plus 0 0.5, that will be 2. So the peak voltage is 2. Same here. These are 4. 4 times 0 0.5, it will be 2. So it's 2 volts. That's the peak voltage. And then we find the frequency now. The frequency, we are going to find the period first. So it's the, the one wave is from here up to here. That's one wave. But how many are we covering? The time base is 10 milliseconds per centimeter, which is 10 milliseconds. But how many boxes do we have? How many centimeters? From here up to, okay, from here, or from here, it's just the same. This is one wave, and then this is also one wave. So how many? It's one, two, three, four, five, six for one wave. So if we multiply this, for, for us to find the period, for us to find the period, We've got, uh, we've got six boxes, which is six times 10 milliseconds. This will be 60 milliseconds. 
and then the mid is times 10 to the power negative 3 so it will be equal to 0 0.06 seconds that's the period and then we have to find the frequency because we want to find we've already found the peak voltage what's remaining is the frequency but the frequency is equal to 1 over the period so 1 over the period 0 0.06 second will be equal to 16.7 Hz. That's the frequency. So peak voltage is 2 and the frequency is 16.7. So the answer is A for question 35. Uh, question 36. The diagram below shows an electrics, electronic circuit with a cell, two switches, and a bulb all connected in series. Which of the following logic gate does the combination of S1 and S2 switches represent? which will make the bulb light. So if we close these two switches, what they are talking about is a thing of, if we close these two switches, okay, if we don't close, which of the following logic gate does the combination of S1 and S2 switches, does the combination of S1 and S2 switches represent, which will make the bulb light. So what they are talking about which of the following logic gate does the combination of S1 and S2, which will make the bulb light? Yeah, we are talking about something which will make the bulb light despite the switches not being closed. So this, for example, the A, this is the, the AND gate. And AND gate, when the, the input is zero at both switches, then even the output will be zero. So it will not make the bulb light. And then B, for B, that's the O gate. It's just like the AND gate. If the input at the, uh, the input at all points is zero, then the output will also be zero. And then we go to the NOT gate. The NOT gate only has one input and not two inputs. And then let's go to the um, to the NAND gate, which is at D. Yeah, that's a NAND gate. Uh, when the input is zero at both switches, then the output is 1, meaning the bulb will light. So the answer is D, the NAND gate. The diagram below shows a radiation fired into an electric field. What is the polarity of the terminals X and Y and the charge Z on the radiation? So if terminal X and Y, we're just going to analyze, if terminal X and Y are negative and positive respectively, then radiation charge Z. But why? Because this is false? Because the Z cannot be attracted to its positive positive repels. So we go to the B, positive, negative, and then positive. So if this is positive and this is negative, and then this is positive again, yeah, this makes sense because the negative will be attracted to the positive side. Negative, negative, then positive. It cannot be negative, negative. Again, it can, it, if it was negative, negative, it would have been a straight line because it will be attracted to both sides, hence keeping it at the center. If it was positive, negative, and then negative, it cannot be attracted by the same pole, sorry, the same charge, it would repel. So the answer is B. This is positive, and this is negative, and then this is positive because it's being attracted to the negative part, the negative terminal. The diagram below shows a truth table of a logic gate. This is 0, 0, and 1. The input is 0, it produces a 1, and then 0, 1, it produces a 0. 0, oh, yeah, it's 1 and then 0, it produces a 0, another 0 at 1 and 1. So this is a no gate. This one, a no gate. This is the truth table of a no gate. Um, the diagram below shows a decay curve for, the, for a radioactive nuclide, M. How long does it take for 15 over 16 of M to decay? So let's just calculate that. So judging from the diagram, it starts at 40, and then it remains 20 when it's two, after two years, and then the 20 remains 10 after four years, meaning um, the half-life is two years for this substance, the nuclide M. The half-life is two years. So they're talking about 15 over 16 of M. What will, what will be 15 over 16? Let's calculate. So 15 over 16 of 40 
will be equal to which is 37.5 and then the half life is 2 years so for example let's go back to the diagram um from 40 to 20 that's after 2 years it remains 20 and then how long does it take for 37.5 to decay so after 20 decays another 10 decays over here that's 30 after 4 years 30 decays so four years is out of the question. And then after another two years, uh, at six years, another five decays, that's 35. So this 35, here it's at five. So half of five will decay again, that is 2.5. And that's where it will be 37.5. So it's after eight years. That's the correct answer. The correct answer is eight years. So the answer is D. How many nucleons in, are in one neutral atom of radium isotope? What are nucleons? Nucleons are those particles found in the nucleus. And those are protons and neutrons. And they, they are described by the nucleon number, which is the mass number over here. So there are 22 to 228 nucleons in one neutral atom of radium isotope. So that's the last question. And this is where we end in physics. Paper 1 2017 GCE. Till next time, maybe for another paper. It's a goodbye for now. All the best.